Rumors of a mythical valley shrouded in mystery have long been whispered in this region. Today, a chance encounter with small magical beings named sprites confirms the existence of this place. These sprites call you to make it your home. The reasons are unclear, but for a struggling settlement of humans, the opportunity is too good to pass up. Fix, the Keeper Sprite, guides you and your closest companions through the mountain pass that eventually reveals Mythwind Valley. The first sighting of the valley takes your breath away. Its beauty surpasses even the claims of the wildest legends. And to your surprise, there are signs of old foundations and an ancient tower that looms over them. Evidently, you are not the first people to come here. Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Mythwind. I can't wait to show this to you. Mythwind is a cooperative or solo cozy board game with unique characters, magical sprites, a very interesting story, and an adventure that technically can never end. You don't have to ever end it. Look at this. Doesn't this just look awesome? This is the board itself. I have a mat. I, I will say I do have everything for the game. I backed the game to to get the all in so I have both of the expansions that means I am going to be playing today the innkeeper I'd like to show you the expansion character if you want to see some really good playthroughs of this game check out the co-op guild Steve and Kim are doing a playthrough on the channel there if you want the best instructional videos I've ever seen Check out Board Game Coffee, the YouTube channel. They've got a how to play, which is amazing. And then for every single one of the different characters you can play, they have a how to set up and how to play those characters. Incredibly, incredibly well done and very helpful. I'll put links to both of those YouTube channels in the description below so that you can find them there. Just like always, make sure to turn on those Klingon subtitles. If I make any errors and I miss them in editing and someone tells me about them and gives me a timestamp, I will throw those errors up in the Klingon subtitles so people who watch will see them pop up as the video goes. So without further ado, let's jump into our setup. We'll set up the game relatively quickly because it doesn't take too terribly long and we'll jump in. I'm planning on doing one year, hopefully if I can. Uh, that means four seasons. Each season will have nine weather cards so essentially you have nine turns per season. I do want to mention that Barrett and I are planning to live stream year two on Monday, February 5th. So if this game looks interesting to you and you would like to see it played live, check us out on Monday as well. All right, let's jump into setup. After grabbing the three boards here, these are actually three separate boards and laying them out left to right, you'll want to find these little uh, cards here. They have one for each section of the valley. We will be upgrading those throughout the game, placing out buildings. You can see we have the longhouse that's already out. You start start with one building available to you in slot seven. All the other ones, we actually have to discover that land first before we can actually place buildings on it. No matter the player count, you'll always have two worker dice here. One is a villager die and one is a sprite die. I've rolled them up and placed them at the tower. During the game, we can recruit these and use them for extra actions for our specific board. You're going to see on the right hand side, we have a construction queue. As we build buildings, we're going to be placing them out on this construction crew and then events or weather cards are going to push that those constructions uh, cards up. And if everyone goes off of the board, we can place them out into an empty slot. But of course we have to discover that land first. Our town has four resource types. We have culture, we have income, we have production, and we have food. All of them start at zero. Our goal is to push those up and then we'll, we'll use those to either activate buildings that are already built or to build buildings themselves. The game comes with a slew of buildings and the two expansions, if you went all in, also provided more of them. So I have a ton of these. Technically, you can build any one of these that you like. However, all of them have requirements, so prerequisites that you have to have in your town first. For example, this trading post, I need a longhouse. So the only two we can build to start off with is the general store and the trading post. But as we uh, build these, more of these buildings will become unlocked. So for now, I'll just leave these all in a stack, and as we play, we'll explore ones that we can potentially build. If you like the idea of planning out your buildings, you can actually see they have a chart of which buildings will unlock which other buildings that either will upgrade the ones that you have, or you can build other buildings once those ones are out on the board. Really cool that they provide this. It's a little much for me at the beginning. I just know I have these two available. Once I do those two, I will have these five available, and then from there, we can decide what we want to do. Mythwind is broken up into seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. 
We have a tile here to denote specific seasonal events that will happen if weather cards show up in this particular order. Now, the expansion provides something that's really kind of cool. They have ones with less symbols on them, so you're more likely to trigger the abilities. So for our first season, we'll use the regular ones, but then they say every season you can switch them up. So I might actually use one of the expansion tiles for season two. Just remember for each season, you'll get nine turns. So if you do one year, it's nine times four. We've completed our setup of the town board. There are one, two, three, four, five locations that we can go into town right now. But as the game goes and we unlock and construct more buildings and place them in these locations, we'll have more and more town actions uh, as the game progresses. All right, let's look at setting up all the cards for the game. One of the best parts about Mythwind is how everything has a place. So after you complete your playthrough of either a season or of a year, you just can pack it up and then pull it out and everything's already ready for you. So we start over here with our adventure cards. I have shuffled in to start the game 10 adventure cards, numbers 1 through 10. I don't know the order. I place this big thing on top of it so I don't see it because they are double-sided cards. One side will give us an option. The other side will be our resolution. Over over here we have goal cards so this is what drives the game for what you're trying to achieve each season you're going to try and complete one of these goals if you don't nothing terrible happens but a negative effect will happen if you do a positive effect will happen you'll remove that goal from the game and you have a huge stack especially when you add in the expansions of new goals that will be placed into here we have our nine weather cards. Now they tell you the first time you play, don't shuffle this. But unfortunately, Berndt did shuffle it when he did the uh, unboxing. So I just know that the sun card should be our first one. After that, we'll just do it random. And that's really how it should be for all the other seasons anyways. So I feel fine with that. We do start with event card one and only event card one in this stack. But trust me, those will fill up really quick. The game is driven a lot on coins. So we have our fives, ones, and tens for coins. Our character will start with 10 coins. You'll see that in a second. And then we have all of our unused workers. I do have a couple extra because of the expansion. At the beginning of the game, you start with only two workers out at the tower, which does feel like it's limiting, <laughs> which it is. But as you build buildings or events happen, you'll gain more sprites or more villagers. And those are the two different types of workers in this game. To set up your goal deck, you need to grab cards 1 through 7, shuffle them up, and you'll place them here, just like what you did with the adventure deck. However, if you have the expanded horizons, you'll also put in EH1 and EH5, so two of the goals from there. The rest of them, you'll be told when to put them in later. I actually ended up revealing the EH1 is our first one. It says each character must trigger at least one building action. So I'm only playing with one character right now, so I just need to make sure that during this season, I trigger a a building action one time. When I do that, I can place this marker here to denote that I have completed that goal. And at the end of the season, we'll flip this over and we'll get a positive effect because we completed the goal. We've now completed the basic setup for Mythwin. Now we need to do our character specific setup and this will be very different for each character. We're playing the innkeeper. So what our goal is as the innkeeper is we need to satisfy guests. I love satisfying guests. <laughs> I consider you all a guest to meet me at the table, right? So we're trying to satisfy you. How we do that is by placing you or these uh, characters into our inn. This is our inn here. We start with uh, a, a couple pieces of furniture in the inn. We also have our character and worker actions here, as well as we have some conversions here. If we decide that we want to generate some resources for the town, we have to spend coins for that. The innkeeper has a renown track. That's right here. We start at the level one. This tells us how many of the customers we're going to have to draw per round. Uh, so that's generally going to be six when we're at one. However, it is impacted by the weather cards, which we'll see how that works when we play. Since we just put down our down payment on the inn, we only have a couple things here. We have a single table. <laughs> we start with the table. We have a window so people can look outside at the beautiful landscape. And we have a door so that people can get into our inn. We can never sell our last door. There is a potential you can sell items, but you can't sell your last door because no one can can get in. I could sell my table here or my window, no problem. Whenever you sell, it's the half of the cost rounded down. So just to show you, a table I believe costs eight. Yeah, so it costs eight. So we'd get four coins if we sold our table. However, if we don't have furniture, then we can't place our customers and we make them unhappy. They come to our inn and they're not able to stay at our inn. So they're not happy about that. 
You can place your table anywhere in these 25 spaces. However, a door and a window must be on the outer edge because of course, if I have a window here, what are they gonna look at, another, another patron? They don't wanna do that. They wanna look outside of that beautiful scenery. There's a couple other restrictions for the other accommodations that we can purchase, but right now, let's not worry about that. Every character starts with 10 coins and coins are going to be our bread and butter in this game for the innkeeper. I believe some of the other characters may use other resources. Our biggest resource is coins. That's what we're going to generate when we make customers happy. And then we're going to spend coins to gain more accommodations. The way you level up in this game are skill tokens. I have my four level one skill tokens here. Once again, we pay coins to gain them. Um, we have to go to an action on the town board or maybe an event will happen that will allow us to gain these abilities. These will be placed out into our action slots and when we do them as our character action, we can gain the benefit of those skill tokens. So I have these ones out. We have level two and level three. I just have them stacked here because we can't do level two and level three skills until we have specific sprites that come out and I don't even know what that means because I haven't seen a sprite yet. I've only done a year and a half of playing before recording so we'll find out as we play. We have three levels of customers. Thank goodness when we start off we're going to start with the level one customers. There's a total of 12 of these. I'm going to put all 12 of these into my bag. Okay, and then each round we're going to draw a certain amount of these equal to whatever our renown track is at, which currently it's at six. And then depending upon the weather, more or less people will try and come to our inn. And you'll see how that works as we play. I'm going to set the twos and threes aside. We won't see those at a minimum until the next season, because at the end of each season, we're going to see where our renown is at. And if we're at level two, well, then we're going to take all these level twos and throw them in. And if we're at level three, then we'll remove the level ones and we'll just have level two and level three customers. As an innkeeper, we do hear lots of news around the valley, and so we have a set of gossip cards. We get to draw two to start the game. Now, there's going to be an action that we can take to get more gossip cards in our hand, a max of two, but a lot of people have been asking, when do I draw? Well, you only draw when you do that specific action, which I'll show you as we play. So I'm going to have the Royal Theater group in my hand, and I'm going to have for my other one, this one is the Wandering Va Vineyard individual. I'll place those two in my hand. The rest of these, they'll just stay right here. There will be no discard for this deck. Whenever we play a card and we're done using it, we just shuffle it back into this deck. Finally, we have all of our accommodations. Whenever we're trying to satisfy a guest, they will always have to be placed at a furniture accommodation. We have tables, we have doors, we have uh, fireplaces. Who doesn't want to be at a fireplace? Unless maybe it's the middle of the summer. Uh, we have windows and we have bars, okay? So those are our furniture pieces and that's gonna drive how many uh, customers we can actually place into our inn because we can only place one customer per one of these furniture accommodations. Apparently the creatures in the valley don't like to share. <laughs> The second type of accommodation is the service accommodations. These services, they're gonna see they are either purple or orange, cannot hold customers at those locations. Customers have to be seated at a furniture spot. However, a lot of them are going to want specific accommodations. And if we have a theater out, any of the customers that we put into our inn will be satisfied with having a theater there. They don't all need to have their own theater. So once we put one theater in our inn, we're good to go. These six different types are kitchens, theaters, we have music, we have drink, food, and plays. And a lot of these have restrictions on where they can be placed. We won't worry about that now. When we start placing them, we will. I don't know if we'll get there in the first year. Finally, some of the guests may want a style requirement. They may want a cultured experience. So that's going to be this symbol here. Kind of looks like uh, a pillar. They might want may want an imperial experience. Don't ask me what that means, but <laughs> they want it to be imperial or frontier. And that's this symbol. So as we buy these different pieces and put them into our inn, our inn will embrace those styles and we can have multiple different styles in the inn. Heck, we can have all three of them if we want, so long as we have uh, items or I should say services that have those symbols. And that's it for the innkeeper. What's really cool about this game is every single one of the different characters has their own booklet. You can read about it and it'll tell you all the character specific and worker specific actions that can be taken how they gain money, all the, diff the different actions that they're going to do at different times. It's really cool. Now, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to have us walk through one of these day phases so we can see how the different phases work and then we'll just continue going and we'll go through the four different seasons. During the day, we have three different phases, dawn, daytime, and dusk, the three Ds. <laughs> during the day, so four Ds, D, 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 D. So during the dawn phase, we'll resolve one weather card, and that will be the same for every character. No matter what, that's how you start the day. Then we have something specific for our character, welcome guests. Okay? After that, we'll move to the daytime phase. Every character will do town actions. Then we get to do an innkeeper action, and then if we have any workers that we can use, we can use a worker and do a worker action. After doing that, we then go to the dusk phase. That's where, specific for us, we have to return the innkeeper to our player board, we have to return our workers, and then we will host any of our guests that we can. And then if any of the guests that we can't host are unhappy, and they have a negative effect on them, then we have to deal with those. And we'll just simply rinse and repeat this over and over again. So let's start with that dawn phase of resolving one weather card. There are a total of nine of these, so this will be our first one. It seems we're going to have a beautifully sunny day at this first day of spring. We can see that up here, there's only three different weather types, either sunny, cloudy, or rainy. After drawing that card, we need to look and see if there's any seasonal effect. We look at the last three cards drawn. So we're going to look at the last three and see if any of them match exactly in this order. So a cloud, sun, cloud, then this effect happens. Right now we only have one card, so none of that can happen. We'll simply move forward. We now need to resolve the weather effect. There are generally two effects, at least to start with. One, this symbol here means that we draw our top event card. There's another symbol where all buildings in the construction queue will move forward one space. But this one, we're drawing our one and only event card. A sudden crash sound booms across the town. At the source of the commotion is a pile of wood set aside for construction that has collapsed. Trapped underneath it is a panicked-looking creature sprite. It cries out, Help! I was only trying to tidy up the pile! The terrified sprite is carefully freed and gives thanks before embarrassingly scurrying back into the forest. Read event 2 immediately. The creature sprite that was freed from under the woodpile returns to town. He introduces himself as Ponk and takes your group into the forest where there is a gathering of many unfamiliar sprites. You overhear them talking about your town occasionally in a surly tone. Once they notice your presence, however, they scatter and hide in the greenery. Ponk looks embarrassed and scurries away as well. How odd. Perhaps they got shy. We now need to shuffle events 3 and 146 together. I'm going to place them in our tray that we have, and the next time we draw an event, we'll be drawing either 146 or 3. We've now resolved our one weather card. For many characters, that's all they have to do during the dawn phase. We, however, now need to welcome guests. We'll welcome six guests, minus one because it's sunny today, so just five. I'm going to draw five from the bag. Here we have our five guests. Now, each guest is dual-sided. You want to make sure that the side with their level is facing up. Uh, the other side will just look like this, okay? So what you're going to see on these guests, you're going to see what type of accommodation they'd like and what furniture they can be placed at. So this toad guy wants to have a theater and wants to be seated at a table. I have one table, but I don't have a theater. This guy just needs a window, though, so that's great. The other thing you want to look at is in this bottom section. You see how there's an orange circle? That means that if we do not get them accommodated, they're going to have a complaint, and we're going to have to deal with it. Those complaints usually are losing coins, maybe drawing another person out of the bag, and if we can't resolve that person, then also that person might have a complaint, and it can you know escalate. So we've got to see if we can possibly take care of these three because we don't know what their complaints are. Now, I've played the innkeeper a bit, and I know from their pictures generally what they are at this point, but do know when you first start, you don't know. So you don't know what the negative effect will be on one of these uh, specific guests. This will now complete the dawn phase. Let's move to the daytime phase. The first thing we get to do is a town action. There are five different town actions that we can take. The first one here is improve town or discover land. If we'd like to improve the town, we'd have to pay coins to increase one of the four resources we have in the town. Every character has a different conversion for the different resources. For us, though, it's straight 10 coins across the board for any of the different resource types for the town. So we'd have to spend 10 coins. That's all I've got. I'm certainly not doing that right now. If, though, let's say we had 30 coins, we could do 
two food and one income if we wanted, or two food and one production. You can do this as many times as you're able. The other action we can do is discover land. Now it costs five coins and we can choose any spot in town to remove one of these uh, cards. And now we can place a building here. There's also a benefit on the back side of these cards, but I'm not gonna look, so I'm surprised when I flip them over. Now you're going to see the sprite symbol here. That denotes what your alignment is for that day. I'll explain that during the character portion of our turn. But just know that if we do go here, we are aligned with the sprites. The second action that's available to us is hiring. We can come to the tower and hire either one worker, and it can be of either type, for two coins, or two workers for five coins. This is actually what I'm going to do. I would love to hire two workers, but I need money. So I'm going to just spend two out of my 10 coins. So I'll have eight left, and I'll hire the sprite worker. Because I hired a sprite worker, that does mean I am aligned to the sprites for this turn. I'll put that worker here, and I can use that worker because it's at a level three, three different times before I've used up that worker. Once I've used up this worker and it goes to a zero, I'll re-roll them and put them back into the tower space. If I ever roll a blank when putting them into a tower space, I just keep rolling until I don't get a blank. If let's say I had spent five, so I gathered both of those workers, one was a villager and one was a sprite, I could decide what my alignment is. Next, we have a construct building action. We can go here and construct one of those buildings, but I don't have any town resources, so I can't do that. We can also do a building action. So if I decided to go to the longhouse, I could either gain one coin or I could gain a new skill, but I need to spend 15 coins to do that. I don't have 15 coins. Finally, what I consider the most fun action and the one you'll probably see us do a lot at the beginning, especially because we'll have no money, is exploring. And that's when we're gonna draw a card from the adventure deck. And then our alignment is purely based upon whatever uh, choice we make in that specific card, it'll tell us. I'm realizing I didn't mention for the longhouse, you can see up here, we can choose our alignment when we go there. And we align with the villagers if we choose to construct. We've now completed our town action. Let's look at our innkeeper and our worker actions. During each day, we get one character action, so we can choose one of these five. However, we're limited by the alignment that we chose during the town phase. So since we decided to align with the sprites for this turn, we only have these three actions available to us. These bottom three would be available only if we um, had aligned ourselves with the villagers. Our five actions are pamper, improve, serve, then we have mingle down here and party right here. And we use this party token if we have a party at our inn. <laughs> so let's just talk about the three that we can choose right now. If we choose the pamper action, we can take any one of our customers, flip them upside down, ignore whatever restriction that they need to be able to be placed in our inn, and we can place them. Essentially, we're helping them out even though they want specific things we still figure out how to make them enjoy their time at the end however uh, as you get more and higher levels of the different customers you'll only gain one coin from them no matter what even if they were let's say a level three customer who normally would give you three coins the improve action here is how you upgrade your inn itself. We can purchase one item, we can move one item, and we can even sell an item for half its value rounded down. The final action that we can do is the serve action. The serve action uses those gossip cards. Those gossip cards are dual use. The bottom section of a card has symbols. If we decide to serve, we'll place this, place this out on the table, and it's, it's like as if our inn for that day would have a theater and a cultural style. So for that day only, we would assume that those symbols are part of our inn, and so that could accommodate certain guests. If let's say we had unlocked a skill and we had a skill placed here like so, if we choose our character action to be this pamper action, we'd also do the skill effect. However, when we use a worker later, and you're gonna see there's a spot to put a worker, if we place a worker there, the worker does not get to use our skill. And we can't move those skills around until we gain a new skill. Whenever you gain a new skill, you can move other skills around. So what I'm thinking for our first action is, I think we're going to serve. We're going to place this card on the table. Now at the end of the round, we're going to discard it. The whole top part we can ignore. We're just looking at the bottom. So right now, for one night only, we're having a theater in our inn. Maybe someone is doing a sock puppet shows, <laughs> something like that. Uh, but that can help us potentially accommodate some of these customers, which I felt like it was worth it. 
That was our character action, nice and quick. Now we can do worker actions. We can use any workers that we have, even if they don't match our alignment, which is really nice, actually. But we only have sprites, so once again, we only have these three to choose from. I'm going to take this sprite down to a two, and I'm going to build. I have exactly eight coins. I'm going to go ahead and buy another table. On the back side of the table, we can see it costs eight coins, and we can place it anywhere in our inn. I'm hoping that they're playing board games at these tables. Maybe we'll put the table right by the window, so we got some nice natural light. There we go. <laughs> that completes the daytime phase. We'll now move to the dusk phase, simply grabbing our innkeeper and placing it back onto our player board. We'll return our workers, so that worker, because it still has a value, a value of two, I'll place it back into my slots so I can use uh, them next turn. And then we can now host guests. So hosting guests is something specific for our player, uh, the innkeeper. Right now I have four pieces of furniture and I think I can actually place four of these customers. That's what I was looking to do. I have a theater, that sock puppet show is going on. So both of these will work because I have two tables. I have a window. Now I don't have a kitchen, but I do have a basic door. So I'm gonna slot all four of these. It's kind of cool how you slot these. You'll just place them in and they've got a little spot that they go so it's easy for you to tell where they're being placed and you can make sure they have all the accommodations that they want so if we look there we have four out of our five customers happy that will not happen normally that was a good first round that means now we generate coins equal to their level so we have all level ones so that's going to give us four coins we then look to see if the one customer we could not accommodate has any sort of a complaints, and they don't. Cool. So now the final piece is we compare the amount of customers that we accommodated versus the ones that we cannot accommodate. If the ones that we accommodated, there's more of them than the ones that we could not accommodate, our renown goes up by one. If it's equal to or less, though, our renown will go down by one. And of course, it can't go below where it's at right now. This means we can increase our renown by one, which is great. Just remember, if we get to level two, though, we're drawing eight around instead of six. And so then it's more likely that we're going to fail. Now what we're going to do at the end of the round is we're just going to grab all of these customers, whether we accommodated them or not, and throw them back into our bag. And then we'll start the next, the next day. I do want to mention this gossip card has now been discarded. And since it's discarded, I'm shuffling it into the gossip deck. We're on to day two. Let's grab our weather card. We have yet again another sunny day. There's no seasonal effect for two suns in a row because they all need at least three, so we can just skip that. And now we're going to draw five customers instead of six because it's a sunny day. We have our five customers here. It looks like we for sure can take care of this one who wants a window and this one who wants to sit by a door. Who wants to sit by a door? I don't know. But these three we cannot accommodate so far. We have four coins. Let's use two to get the other worker. Now, I've got to assume that playing cooperatively, this would be very different, but solo, it's two additional actions for you. Why not? Cooperative, you'd probably have to figure out who's going to get those workers. If you think about it, playing this with five people, because the expansion can be with five people, to start off with only two workers is brutal. I hired a villager, so I'm aligned with the villagers this time. So let's talk about the two actions we haven't talked about yet, partying and mingling. The party action allows the innkeeper to enhance the benefit of a specific type of accommodation at the cost of renown. So we can spend one renown. So you can only do this if your renown is higher than one, which actually ours is right now. Not level one, but just up by one. We have to spend one renown, and then we get to place this party marker on one furniture accommodation. So let's say the tables or a window. Maybe we make it look festive or whatnot. Then any of the customers that are sitting at any of those types of furniture so I would probably want to do a table if I can sit uh, two customers uh, at each table or one at each, so two total. They would each give me one additional coin. So if I did this action, put this onto the tables, you can see the tables over here, and sat two customers there, normally they'd give me one coin each. They'd each give me two coins each, okay? But it's at a cost of renown. The other thing I can do is mingle. This one is my favorite. This is what makes the innkeeper cool. We can take one of the rumor cards or gossip cards in our hand and shuffle it into the adventure deck. And I definitely want to do that with this one. If you read it, it says the innkeeper gains four coins, all other characters gain two, and then you draw another adventure card. So I want this card into that adventure deck and go adventuring and hopefully find it. 
if we find it, it's like we're finding that wandering vintner there, and that wandering vintner gives us money. Cool. But that means this is out of my gossip deck. The other thing we get to do is after doing this action, we get to draw up to two uh, gossip cards in our hand, so it replenishes our hand as well. Here is our first gossip card that we draw. Okay, it gave us food and drink, and what is that? The I don't remember what type of style that is. Another one for the style, and the kitchen. Oh, the kitchen is nice. Although you're supposed to seat guests at the end of the round, sometimes I pre-seat them to help myself see what's available. So I know I've got someone using the door. I know I have someone using the window. I have two tables and I have three people that want to be seated and can't. What I think I'm going to do with one of my worker actions, I'm going to use my sprite, taking it down to a one, and I'm going to grab one of these and I'm going to pamper them, which means I'm going to flip them this way backwards and I'm just going to have them sit at the table. Gaining renown is great and all, but I think what I'm going to do is decrease my renown by one and use my villager here, taking them down to a one to have a party and place that party out on this table. So although this person didn't get what they wanted, they're having a party at the table and they're going to give me two coins instead of one. This means during the dusk phase, I'll gain one, two, three, four more coins and I have two left over, so it puts me up to six. I have two customers that I was not able to place into the inn, but they both don't have complaints. And I have more. I have three here and two that I did not uh, service. So that means my renown still goes up. Cool. I'll then gain my innkeeper uh, miniature back for our next turn. You can see these turns go really quick. And I'm going to put all these back into my bag. And my party is over for now. Hopefully I can have a couple more parties. Oh, and of course, these are all going to go back. But now the next time I use either of those, they're going to go to zeros. And then I'll roll them and place them back into the tower. We're on to day three already. Let's flip our next uh, weather card. It appears we have a bit of clouds. And if we look here, I don't see it. sun, sun, cloud as one of the weather patterns. So no seasonal effect. Instead, we'll just draw our next event card. An elderly man rides into town on his rickety mule-drawn cart on an otherwise unremarkable day. He stops in the middle of town and begins to unload. When questioned of his intentions, he simply smiles and said, I've been called here by our creator to be with you wonderful people. All on his own, he begins to build. Place the chapel on the fourth space of the construction queue. We have our first building in the construction zone. Sweet. Now it's going to take four of those symbols to push it up to be able to finally put it into our town. And we need to discover some land, clear it off so that we can actually place the chapel somewhere. But cool. This will actually give us an end of season effect at the end of every season. We will gain one culture because of the church. Because it's cloudy, we have six total customers. Here's our six. We know we can place this one and this one. That's the only two right now that we can place. I really need to get a theater or a kitchen out because that will help and maybe a bar, but there's just so many things you wanna do. <laughs> For our town action this time, why don't we go on an adventure just like Bilbo? When you do this action, you just remove this shield, grab the first one that's on here, and then drop the shield right back down. We have a hunting mishap. You've been tracking a prize buck. It's taken hours to get to this point, but the opportunity to line up your shot arrives as the stag grazes in the field. Suddenly, you receive a blow to the back of your head and everything goes black. When you come to, the first thing you notice is the splitting headache you have. Well, duh. The second are the unusually large bear footprints nearby. Evidently, someone snuck up behind you, although they didn't take anything, and there's no sign of the buck. Shuffle event 125 into the event deck. Cool. And you can see here, we are aligned with the sprites for this turn. Moving to our innkeeper action, I think I'm going to pamper one of our customers. We know this customer, I have no bars. So let's flip him over. And we have no one that's trying to go and hang out at the window. So let's have him hang out at the window. <laughs> we do have this one here that's looking for the door. So I'm just going to place this so I know I don't have to worry about him. So I have one more with a complaint. What do I want to do with him? Do I want to pamper another one? Why not? Let's do that. Let's use our final sprite. So it's going to go down to a zero. And we're going to pamper this one. We can see it has right here uh, a complaint but we don't have to worry about what the complaint is because we're just going to set him at the table that was our worker action i could do another one with our villager but i think i'm going to hold on to the villager we have three more than less happy customers so we'll grab three coins for that that puts us at nine nice I'm trying to get to 12 i think if i can i'm going to re-roll this die 
and we get a two, and I'm gonna place that back down into the tower space, and we can uh, hire them again. I do have three customers that I could not uh, accommodate, but none of them have any complaints. So, so far I've been able to avoid the complaints, which is great. However, three and three means that our renown goes down because we made just the same amount of people happy as unhappy. We need to make more people happy in order to increase our renown. Then we will just put all these back into our bag. That's the next turn. This is quick. Moving to the dawn phase, we'll grab our next card. Oh, we have some cloudy weather, and this means we'll move up the buildings in the building queue. We're looking for a weather pattern of sun, cloud, cloud. We do have cloud, sun, cloud, but not cloud or sun, cloud, cloud. So because of that, we do not get the additional upgrade of our building, which is a bummer, but this will mean the chapel will move forward one space. This means discovering some land is going to become more and more important. Here are the six customers we have this round. Because it was cloudy, we get the full six. My favorite part of the game is the adventures. So you're gonna see, and especially because I need to save money, I'm gonna be doing a lot of adventuring. We have the sunken cave. Lounging by the seaside, you spot a grotto partially submerged in the tide. Exploring it, you see a scattered pile of goods. Looks like someone's pack washed up here. There's also a submerged tunnel nearby. You could swim it, but the tide is rising. Okay, we can either search the goods and leave with your findings before the tide comes or push your luck and swim into the submerged tunnel. Yeah, I don't love tunnels. I don't love tight corners. So I think we're going to do the first one. You find some goodies and escape well ahead of the tide. Gain three coins. That puts us up to 12 coins. And you can see here we're aligned with the villagers this turn. Because we're aligned with the villagers, let's do a serve action this time. Let's put this gossip card down so we have a kitchen this time. With the kitchen, we're able to place this customer at a table, this customer, which would normally have a complaint at the window, and this customer, which normally would have a complaint over here by the door. I would love to do a build action with 12 coins. I could build a theater or a kitchen now. I need 12 coins for those. But guess what? <laughs> I don't have a sprite available to me, and I only have a village worker. I could do this. Let me see about the card that I have. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to put my worker here, taking it down to a zero, and we are going to mingle. That means we can place this card into the adventure deck. And if we reveal it, all workers will increase their value by one. During the dusk phase, we'll pick up that village worker, give him a roll. Come on, we got to roll him and not be a blank. Can't be a blank. Let's see, okay, that's a two. And we'll put that into the tower location and then we'll gain three more coins. And you know what this means? We could get a skill. I'm thinking maybe of doing that. It might be a little early, but I think I'm gonna do it. Uh, three more coins for those three. It gives us a total of 15 whopping coins. However, we do have three of these customers that we cannot satisfy and one has a complaint. Our first complaint. We'll flip over this customer and see what their complaint is. Oh, this one means we have to draw another one out of the bag. So here, let me grab one of these. And if that customer we can place, we can. So let's see, this one, we don't have a bar, so we can't place it. If it had a complaint, then we'd also have to resolve it, but it doesn't have a complaint. Whew. All right, but that means we have four here that we could not accommodate, three that we could, so our renown does not go up. Uh, but I have 15 coins. I'm going to remove all of these at the end of our dusk phase, and we'll start our next turn. Oh, and don't forget, this card will be placed into our gossip deck, but not before I draw two cards, because I did do the mingle action. I forgot about that. So these two cards are in my hand. Oh, this one gives us a theater, and this one, eh, it's not super helpful. For our next weather card, let's see. We have uh, some clouds and another event. Three clouds has no seasonal effect, so we can ignore that. We'll just draw our next event card. Fix greets your group and apologizes for the confusion with Ponk in the forest. He gets overly keen. We sprites are secretive and don't warm to outsiders easily. Fix taps herself on the chest. Well, not all of us. Sorry for not warning you. She then explains that there are six sprite tribes of whom some have uncertainties about human beings being here. Fix suggests you find a way to show them your good intentions. Wait, we're now going to shuffle cards four through seven into the event deck. With all these cloudy days in spring, we continue to have six total customers. These are our six we need to please. It might be a little early for this, but I do feel like with 15 coins, going to the longhouse is a great idea. 
So whenever there's a slash, you get to choose one or the other. So we can simply gain a coin, or we can spend our 15 coins, 5, 10, plus 5 more to gain our first skill. This action will also satisfy our goal for this specific season, so we'll get the positive benefit on this one. Looking at our four level one goals, I think this one makes the most sense. Every time we activate whatever skill that we choose to put this by, we will gain one coin for every table in our inn. Well, we already have two, so that's two coins. So I'm gonna grab this one. This one would be great if we're trying to get to level two. I'm not trying to get to level two yet. We can actually remove one of the customers that's waiting to be seated in our inn. And so then you're more likely to be able to increase your renown. I'm not ready for that yet. I have no bars in one door, so we're definitely going to do this one. I feel like one of the actions we do a lot is pampering. So let's go ahead and put, and it's called waxed furniture. We're going to put our skill here. So every time we choose this as our character action now, we'll gain two coins. Speaking of which, we can now do our actions. And as you saw with that building, we get to choose which alignment we'd like. I'm going to do the sprite alignment. I'm going to choose the pamper. So because of that, I'm just going to grab the two coins now because I have no coins and I want some. So I'm going to pamper. I'm going to grab this one because I don't have a kitchen here yet and I'm going to flip them backwards and place them somewhere. Let's go ahead and place them at the table. That sounds good. Then I can place this one at the door and I can place this one at the window. So that's going to give me three or more coins because I have three total customers that are happy. Unfortunately, I have three that are unhappy. So that means I'm not going to increase my renown and one of them has a complaint. We'll flip the one with a complaint over and we need to draw another one. Oh my gosh, okay, be nice to me. Yes, awesome. This one does not have a complaint, so we're good. During that dusk phase then, we'll take all of these customers back and we will put them back into our bag and we'll draw our next event card. And by event card, I mean weather card. Speaking of which, we only have one, two, three, four left. So we have three more turns after this one. We've got some full on rain, which means we're going to have seven customers. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to handle seven customers. Uh, we will have an event and no seasonal tile effects. So let's draw our event card. This is future Colin interrupting our regularly scheduled program. So I ended up at this point drawing a card from the adventure deck instead of the event deck. And I drew this one. And then I drew another adventure card. I actually resolved the entire turn and started moving on. And then it triggered what I did. And I tried to backtrack and keep the, the game going the right way. Well, I totally missed putting this card back into the deck. And I totally missed that I should have four less coins. And you're going to see I totally missed that I have different customers out. So you're going to see it, things will not make a total amount of sense right now, but just keep following along. It's close enough. So apologies for that. Just wanted you to know, let's jump back into our playthrough. The swamp spirits aren't hard to find, living near a large swamp at the valley's edge. They aren't too concerned about your group or the town either. Even as you speak to them, it feels as though they're ignoring you. You could try being nice and putting on a campfire party for the swamp spirits or sprites. You may put on a campfire and lose one culture to do that. However, I don't have any of that, so I can't. So then we'll do the otherwise. Shuffle in event 49. Set this card aside. When you have resolved events 4 through 7, shuffle in event 8. Because it's rainy today, we have seven total customers trying to come into our inn. Moving into the day phase, I have nine total coins. I'd love to do something cool with them, but I think I'm first going to spend five just to get the two workers. I want both of these so I can do tons of actions during my turn. And that means I can choose either one of sprites or villagers that I am associated with. I'm definitely going to align. I'm going to align it to the sprites. You can probably guess why, because I'd like to pamper. With that skill, I get two coins back, so I go back from four to six coins. And I'm going to pamper this guy so that I don't deal with his negative effect. Then let's see, I can put this guy here. I can put this one here. Why don't we go ahead and pamper one more time, taking our sprite down to one from a two, I believe it was at a two. Now I don't get to do this again because that's specific to me, but I'm going to pamper this one. That means I have four here that I will get four coins for. That means I'll have a total of 10 coins and I have three customers that I cannot make happy, but none of them have complaints. And since there's three here and four here, I actually get to increase my renown by one. Perfect, let's start that next round. We'll draw our next weather card. 
It's nice and sunny today, which means we'll only draw five customers. That's great. And we increase our construction queue. And we're very close. We need a rain, a sun, and a cloud. We've got a cloud, a rain, and a sun. So it does not match close, though, so we don't get the free resource. We'll tick our chapel one farther down the construction queue. Here we have our five customers coming to the inn this evening. Our town action this round, we're going to align with the sprites, and we're going to clear some land so that chapel can hopefully show up. This does cost us five coins. We're going to clear out this spot right here, and it just so happens I know from guessing the last time when I was playing, this gives me 10 coins. Why the heck not? So I'm going to get that five back plus five more. I have a total of 10, 15 coins maybe? 15 coins it is, and I love it. So what I'm going to do for my action, I'm going to pamper. That means I'll get two more coins because of those two tables. I got to get that third table built because then every time I do this action, I get three coins. <laughs> All right, I'm at 17 coins. Let's see, who do I want to pamper? I'm going to pamper this guy because he has complaints, and I'm going to throw him at the window. Then I'm going to throw him at the window. <laughs> the poor guy slams into the window. Are you happy now? I'm then going to use my sprite. Uh, taking it down to a zero so it will be rolled up at the end of this to do a build and I'm going to use 12 of my 15 and I think I am going to get a theater finally. We can see here the theater costs 12. I'm going to place it here so we can potentially place things next to it. The uh, plays and the music, I believe, both need to be adjacent to this. Just like for the kitchen, we need to have food and drink adjacent to it. So that's why I wanted this here. So I have my theater here, which means now both of my tables can be filled up. And not only that, I can use my villager here. And let's put on a party. We're going to take it down to a one from a two, if I can find the one. There we go. And we're going to knock down our renown by one space going down. But we're going to have a party with our tables. So that means each of them are going to give us two coins. I do have one here for the door as well. This was a good round. Look at this. I'll now place my worker that I still have available back here. This sprite I'll have to rehire. I'm going to say that's at a three. I'll just re-roll it. There you go. It's at a two. We're going to gain one, two, three, four, five, six total coins. <gasps> that was a lucrative round. We do have one customer, and this customer has a complaint uh, that we were not able to make happy, and that's going to push down our renown. But what's great is our renown, renown is already down to the lowest it can be, so you can't push it down any farther. Write a bad review. I don't care. I believe that does happen before we compare the amount of people that we accommodated versus not accommodating. So I accommodated four versus one, so I actually I think I get to put my renown up by one. So no one's going to listen to this mummy-looking guy. <laughs> We'll draw our next weather card. We only have two rounds left. We just have some rain, so that means we'll have seven customers at the inn. No events this time. Here we have our seven customers we need to deal with this round. Why don't we go ahead and do an adventure this time? Several hiking trails have been discovered and are considered safe for your developing community. Near the halfway point on one of them, you notice a deer trail that looks as though it could be more a direct route back to the town. It's getting dark and a shortcut might be a good idea, if it's in fact a shortcut. Do we want to stay on the trail? It's safe. Or, you're out here to explore, see where this new trail takes you. Yeah, I like seeing new trails, don't you? Let's do a trail. This route isn't much of a shortcut because of its winding path, but you find some berries that the local wildlife have snacked on. You decide to grab a small bush to see if it can be planted. Oh, gain a food. Our first town resource, and it's a food. One food. We can't build anything with one food, but we'll, we'll get there, maybe. <laughs> I've been kind of neglecting the town. Also, if you didn't notice, I am aligned with the sprites this turn. We're now into our character action, but before doing that, I'm just going to place out the people I know we can take care of so I can see what we have left. So we actually are using all of our furniture locations. Okay, do we want to build? I have 5, 10, I have 11. For this round, I think we're going to do the pamper action again. I don't think this one has a complaint. It doesn't. So what I'm going to do is grab the one that does have a complaint. I am going to seat it at the window. I'm going to throw them at the window again. Uh, then I also generate two more coins. That's going to get me up to uh, 13. So next time I can build the kitchen. 
I want to build another table too. I have so many things I want to do. I have a villager remaining, so let's use the villager. And that will then go back into the tower after this. We're going to push down our renown by one. But this is going to generate us more coins. Feels like it's worth it. We'll put that on the table again. So that means now during the dusk phase, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six coins. But I need more furniture in order to make more than that. Having an additional table. The other one that I see that has a table, we need a kitchen. So I think I'm going to do the kitchen first. Speaking of which... I have three here that we cannot accommodate, but none of them have any sort of concerns or complaints. So since we have more that we did versus not, our uh, renown will go up by one. We'll then re-roll this and we'll put these two back into the tower. Last weather card of the season and we have some rain. A sun and two rain does not trigger our seasonal effect. This is why next season I think I'm going to use the ones that only need two symbols because I think they'll go off a little bit more, which will be kind of fun. Uh, but we do increase our buildings. The chapel will be one away from coming out into our town. Here we have our seven customers we're trying to accommodate this round. Remember, I only have four places to put them, uh, but I've got to get that kitchen first. Speaking of which, we're definitely going to come here and hire hire both of those workers for five coins. They're twos each. I'm going to align myself with the sprites. Go figure, right? <laughs> Our character action, we're definitely going to pamper. Let's pamper this one right here. Uh, we'll also gain two coins. I'm going to put this one by the window because it has an, a, a complaint. And that will generate us two more coins. We have 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 coins now. So we are definitely going to do a build. We're going to use one from our sprites. So we could sell, we can buy, and we can rearrange. Well, I'm definitely going to grab this kitchen. And I'm going to place the kitchen right here, but that costs 12 total coins. So I have four coins remaining. With our villager then, we're definitely going to have a party. We're going to take it down to a one. We're going to have a party at the table. It's going to push down our renown, but I still feel like that's worth it. I still don't understand how that pushes down our renown if we're having a party, <laughs> but we'll take it as it is. We'll put that one here, this one here, and I think this one has the worst effect for a complaint because those are the max spots that we can place any of our workers, or I should say customers. So I have one, two, three, four. That means I have one, two, three, four, five, six total gold. I definitely am going to get a table next, at the beginning of the next season, I think, because that will rake in some money. Only one of these customers has a complaint, and it's drawing an additional one. So we're going to grab this one. Oh, no. I can't place it. I don't have a bar. And we have to flip it over. Oh, we get to draw another one. Okay. We have this one. We don't have a bar. We have a kitchen. Or, yeah, we have a kitchen, but not a bar. But we don't need to place that one. But we definitely, we have more here that we could not place than we could accommodate. So we don't get to push up our renown. Bummer. Okay, and both of these workers will go back. Okay, that's going to end our season. At the end of the season, we can resolve end of season actions. That would be on specific buildings like the chapel. I'm one away from getting the chapel out, but I didn't get it. Uh, then we have resolve gold cards, which we can do. Then we'll just reshuffle up the weather deck. We'll change the season tile. And then if we wanted to change characters, we could. But I think I'm going to do at least another season with the innkeeper. We'll start with that goal card. We most certainly used a building this time, so we get to reveal the backside. And it says we get to gain a wild resource. So when we see that, that's for our town. We can grab any wild resource for the town. And then we're going to shuffle in goal EH2 into this stack. We've shuffled that goal into our goal deck, and now our goal for this season is each character must go on one adventure. Well, that should be pretty easy. We're going to grab our weather deck and shuffle it up, and we'll place that deck right here. I would really like to make the general store. I think the ability is cool. So that wild resource I'm going to use as income, increasing that to one. We need two of those. We need one food and one production to be able to build it for one to two players. We'll then flip our season tile. Now I just want to show you, this is what the summer season tile looks like normally. Here's the one that will activate more often. Oh, it can increase and decrease our income. Oh, and this one can increase our workers. So all workers of that type will increase by one. Cool. Let's go ahead and put and use this one for this uh, specific season. I almost forgot our character upkeep. We need to look at our renown. 
if our renown one is at level two, we need to take those level two customers and throw them in the bag. Now we're definitely at level one. <laughs> Absolute low as two can be. But hey, I'm starting to make some income. Hopefully by the end of this season, we can sneak ourselves into level two. Now to get to level three, we can't go past it until we have a specific style for our inn, just so you know. And we could get that by, you know, buying this food, which we can now place because we do have a kitchen out. That would then be the I don't remember, it's like the Imperial or something. Uh, that type of style would be included in our inn. Then we can go up to level three. And I said Imperial, and of course, that symbol is cultured. Okay, we're going to start the next uh, season just by drawing our first weather card. We'll flip it over. We have a sun, and our building, the chapel, is finally going to come out. We'll place our chapel right here. Now this does not have a spot for us to go and do an action. However, if ever we don't have an action that we can or want to do, you can go here and just use it to determine what your alignment is. So our alignment would be with the sprites. But this effect only happens at the end of the season. So I was literally off by one to be able to have this out last time and I could have gained one culture. Looking at our five customers, we can actually place all of them into our inn no problem except for this one. So maybe I get a bar. Do I get a bar or a table? That's always the question. They're both eight coins. For our town action this round, let's go on an adventure. We found our gossip card, the Master Hunter. All of the villagers, which include this one, get ticked up by one. So now we have two villagers we can use instead of one. And this goes into our gossip deck and then we draw another adventure card, which we have Natural Bay. From the top of the valley, people have been able to see the ocean nearby. No one has established an easily traversed path, but on this hike, you can hear rushing water and taste salt in the air, making careful note of the landmarks. You find your way to the protected bay. It is connected to the ocean and also fed by a waterfall. The sea life here is vibrant. When you return to town and tell of this idyllic spot, someone offers to build a wharf there. Add the fishing grounds to the construction queue. Cool. And we can see here, this is village alignment for us this time. The fishing ground building will go into the level one slot. And something I realized I totally forgot. I totally forgot to get the benefit here. You can see we have a sprite symbol and food. So I'm going to have one more food, which actually you can see right here. I'm going to take it up to a two. But the other thing is we get to roll in a new sprite worker. So I'm gonna have now two sprite workers in total, which is cool. And then once this one is built, which is put on the one spot, and it's once it's out onto our town, we'll get another sprite worker. That'll be three sprite workers. This will be nice to have more than two workers. Of course, I roll a zero. Okay, that's a two, that'll work. Let's first see what customers we can place out during the day phase to make sure I know what I need to do to ensure I'm good to go. And actually it looks like I can place all but one of them anyways. Now these are the only three that I can do. I can't do a party because my renown is terrible. So I guess I could just do uh, this one, the mingle. And you know what? I'm gonna do that and put this card into the adventure deck. And then I get to draw a new one. So I'll grab this one right here. This new one will go into my hand. Oh, I like this one. That can give us coins. That was my character action, the mingle action. We're definitely going to build with this sprite. That sprite will then be used up, but we are going to do a bar. Ugh. Or do I do another table? No, I have no reason to do another table. But the table would get me money, the money that I could use to buy a bar. We're going to do a table. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. It's just because then every time we do this, we get three coins with another table. So let's put the table here. We could sell something. I don't want to sell anything. We can move stuff around. I don't have a reason to move stuff around right now. So, well, I think we're good there. We just have two coins remaining. There's no additional action I want to take with this villager. So that means this sprite's just going to get rolled until we get something that's not a zero. And you know, oh, I got a three. I'm just gonna go with that. <laughs> I got a three right here. We'll put that into the tower space and we'll gain one, two, three, four coins. That puts us up to six, because we had two before. And then we have only one that we could not accommodate. So that means we will increase our renown by one and then we'll start that next round. I almost forgot that we also can place this marker here. We've already completed our goal. So let's grab our next weather card. 
We have a cloudy day, so that means we'll draw six customers. But what's really cool is we get some free income because of the seasonal event because we have a sun and a cloud and we're going to draw an event card. We'll increase this by one and that means we only need one of these to be able to actually put out our general store. We have Watcher in the Woods. Your group can't shake the feeling of being watched as they work. Occasionally, at the edge of the forest, there appears to be movement, but whenever anyone looks, there's no one there. All they find are those giant footprints and some dark fur. Shuffle Adventure Card 80 into the Adventure Deck. We drew up six customers this time, and of course I have two that need a bar. I don't have a single bar at my inn. Why would you come here? Go to the one down the street. <laughs> Our town action this time, we're going to discover some land so that fishing ground has a place to go. We're going to spend five coins and let's do this one. And that gives us a wild resource so we can choose any of the town resources to gain. And you know what? That will work. We can do the production. That's cool. Now we can actually build a building, the general store, because the general store needs two of the income, which we have, one of the production and one of the food. Yeah. Ha. Huh. We're not very cultured here, though. <laughs> that seems pretty typical for Meet Me at the Table. We are aligned with the sprites this time. Let's see which ones we can place without any issues. I think we have... Do we have one for... Oh, no, I think we only have two tables, don't we? Yeah, we have two tables. That's why I didn't really want to get a third one, but it just felt so good. <laughs> okay, so we have one table that's open. Two of these... One of them has a complaint, so I'm definitely going to do this one. That's going to get me three coins now. Thank you, tables. So I have three coins plus the one from before, so I have four. And I'm going to place this guy at a table. Even though he wanted to go to a bar, I said sit at the table, watch the TV. <laughs> I do think I will use my villager here, taking it down to a one, to be able to do the mingle action. This four coins is awesome. So I'm going to shuffle that into my uh, adventure deck. Hopefully we'll find that. That means for money, we have one, two, three, four, five. Gosh, we are raking in the dough. Five plus four, we're back to nine. This one we did not accommodate, but no concerns, no complaints. They understand. We're now one away from level two. I think we're going to start getting to level two this time for sure. I feel that we'll have a bar coming in our near future, I think. Let's flip our next event card. Oh, and we have some rain. Well, this is not a bad card to flip. Although we're going to have to deal with seven customers in total, we're going to be able to put out that fishing pond. We also get to increase all of our workers by one, all types, because we have both of them there. So my villager goes back to a two. The sprite here will go up to a three. That one's already a three. We're then going to be able to, because this fishing ground gives us another sprite, we'll roll that in, and that's a three. And we'll place this out. This gives us an action that goes like this. Do not take a character action this game day. You may lose one income or production to gain one culture or food. Hmm. Cool, not great. The big thing is we have some more workers, which I like. Here we have our seven customers for the day. And once again, bars, why are you coming here? I have no bars. Our innkeeper will go to the tower for our town phase. We're going to just spend two coins to get one of these sprite workers. I love more than one. But I need, well, let's see. No, I won't get enough. So yeah, we're just going to do that for two. We still have seven coins. Because we hired a sprite, we can do these sprite actions. Let's pamper. We're going to pamper this one with the door because I don't have enough doors. And we're going to put them here at this table. Okay, and that's going to give us three coins. Three plus the seven is ten. We're then going to use this sprite, taking it down to a two, so that we can purchase one of these bars. Finally, that's for eight. This will mean we only have two coins left. This also means we'll be able to place our friend here at the bar. Finally, we have a bar. We have one at a door up here. We have one more at a table. And yeah, you know what? Because I've got these all at tables. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I am going to use our villager, taking him down to a one and hitting our renown by one. So we're not going to move up to level two yet, but I'm okay with that. Let's rake in the dough instead, because then we only have one uh, customer that we did not accommodate. That's okay. It does not have a complaint. That will increase our renown back up. And for money, we gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Because I should have put this on the table and three tables are full. Let me just make sure. One, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 coins. I like it. And this will end our day. I believe we have six more rounds before the end of the summertime, and then we go to fall. This time we just have rain and sun. None of those match what's here, so we'll just draw an event card. Tracking down the wood golems is tricky in the dense forest. It takes nearly all day to find them. Your group doesn't feel welcome as they get right to the point. We got no love for damaging the trees. Once you reassure them that you will replant and avoid clear-cutting areas, they begrudgingly accept you. Although it's hard to be sure. If you have a lumber yard, no we don't. So we're going to shuffle event 47. Set this card aside. Once we have 4 through 7 out, we'll um, shuffle in event 8. Because it's sunny, we only have 5 customers this time, and all of those I think I can place no problem. Our town action this time, let's do a build. We need two income, so we'll put this down to a zero, one production, and two, or actually just one food. Two food if we were playing with three or four players, and then we'll put this in the one slot. This will mean I'll probably want to discover land next time, so I have a place to put that. We aligned with the villagers this time, so what I'm going to do is a party. That will push down our renown by one, but now each of the tables gives us two coins. Everyone is seated, so at the end of the round, because I'm not going to use any workers right now, I don't have enough to build what I want to build. I'm looking at building one of these cool doors that also gives me some sort of style. Or I could do the bar, but those cost, oh, the bar only costs 12, but I only have 11. So yeah, I'm just going to leave my workers for now. And that means for coins this time, I'll gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more coins. I already have 11. That's 18 coins. I don't have enough places though to put out more people. So that's why I'm keeping myself, if I can, below this line. Because if I'm drawing eight, I'm not, I can only place out one, two, three, four, five, six at most. I need more furniture here. All right, we'll clean this up and start next, the next round. We'll draw our weather card, and this one is another sun. Two sun would normally trigger losing one income, but I already used the income. I have none left. Take that, you weather token. <laughs> Uh, and no event, so we're just going to draw five customers. Of these five customers, I think there's only one that we can't place because there's two windows and we only have one window right now. I'd like a spot for that general store, so for our town action, we're going to come here and discover some land. Why don't we do this one right here? So what do we gain? One income. Shoot, hopefully I don't lose it. If I draw another sun, I will lose it. Our action this time most certainly will be pampering. That will give us three more coins. We're rolling in the dough right now. This is great. I've got ideas. Okay, so that means we're going to place this one at a table. Awesome. Then I'm most certainly going to use my villager going down to a zero. I am going to have a party at the table pushing down our renown because once again, I don't really want eight yet, although I'm getting close to that. Let's see. I have this one here. Oh, oh, this one needs a bar. I don't have two bars. So, I don't have two bars. That's okay. Uh, maybe I'll build a bar. Do I want to build a bar? <laughs> oh, the choices. I'm going to build something with this uh, sprite, sprite here. It's just, what am I going to buy? I think getting more furniture is ideal. So, uh, another piece of furniture, and I think the bar is a great idea. Uh, is a total of 12, and this one will have a style. So I've got a 10 and two ones. So I'm going to spend the 10 and two ones, 12. I still have five, six, seven, eight, nine to put this bar out. We'll put that bar right here, and that will mean we can place this one here. Sweet, that's cool. And you know, I'm going to be smart and say, instead of the tables, I'm gonna do the bar because there's two at the bar and only one at the table for the party. So we're having a party at the bar this time. <laughs> so maybe it's the Super Bowl. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven total money. And not only that, we'll increase our renown again back up to one before it goes up to level two. I'm kind of thinking I'd like it to end at level two for the last round. So I'll see if I can get myself to do that. But being able to do the party action to keep my renown uh, under wraps is kind of nice. We'll roll this villager. Oh, three. Three villagers for us in the town. Only a few more rounds to go. Looks like four. We'll draw our weather card. Oh, we have some clouds. It looks like we have some clouds and sun. If we look here, there's a sun and then cloud. Oh yes, we do have that sun and cloud. We'll gain one income. 
So far, that's been pretty nice to me. We then get to place the general store out, which means we can gain one culture or one food and another sprite worker. <laughs> Where are all the villagers? I don't know if we're going to have villagers in this game. Okay, we've got two sprites here. Because we have the general store out, we can now build the monument. We can build the post office. We can build the tavern. And I think we can change the general store into an apothecary. You can see here the prerequisite is the general store and then all the different costs. Here we have our six customers. I think the only one we need to worry about is we only have one door, not two. I realize I didn't say what the general store does for us. We can spend three coins and we go there to be able to do one additional character action during a turn. So we could do two character actions. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to come here and I'm going to hire two of these workers. Both of these. Love them. Five coins. Worth it. For our action, we will pamper for sure. That will give us three coins, and we're going to place them at a table. Three beautiful coins. That gives us five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen coins. Wow, that's awesome. It looks like I can place everybody out, so that's good. I'm going to use a villager to keep my renown down, and we're going to have a party in uh, with the bars again, because that sounds cool. We're also going to use this level one worker going back down to a zero. So I'll roll back that back in to build something. We're going to pay it 12 total coins and drop my five in here so that we can gain a door that has another type, and that has to be on the outside. So I'll put the door here. We'll have the doors on the two corners. But this means we have a frontier style and we have, oh, that's another frontier. Do I really want to do two frontier? No, you know what? I think I'm going to take that back. I did a door that was 12. Why don't we do a window? A window is also 12. So let's do this window because that window will give me cultured. So now I have a cultured style and I have a frontier style. I still have another worker. I'm not going to use that. We'll gain coins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight plus the two that we have here is 10 coins. We'll then re-roll this die and we've got a three and we can start our next round. We only have three turns left. We have another cloudy day. This will mean we're drawing six total customers and we draw an event card. Fairies aren't as exclusive as other sprites because they can fly. They live high up amidst the treetops. Getting up there is going to take some special climbing equipment. Equipment that must be built from scratch. As your group climbs, the fairies flit around laughing and encouraging you. By the time you reach the top, you expect to find the fairies impressed by your effort. But instead, they're nowhere to be seen. Oh no! We have to take down one of our villagers. So he's going to go from a two to a one. Blast. If culture is your highest resource. No, I think it's our lowest. Shuffle in event 50. Otherwise, shuffle in event 51. And this is another one of the four through sevens that we need to keep track of. Remember how I was going to buy a door for our inn? Another door. We have two again. Ugh. That means I'm going to have to pamper one of them, I think. I think for this round, we're going to discover some more land. So I have 10 gold. I'll spend five. So I'll have five remaining and I can reveal another land space. Why don't we do it by the water over here? This one's going to increase our culture. Look at our town slowly gain some resources. I like it. Our alignment is with the uh, sprites. So we have these top three actions available to us. I'm just going to slot these in so I can see where I can put them. I've got a window here for you. I now have a bar for you. I have two bars now. This is so cool. So I only have one that I can't do something with. So let's go ahead and do the pamper, gaining three more three more gold. That will give us eight, or I should say coins, because it's not gold in this game. So I have eight, and we will pamper this one, plopping them here at the table. We then will use our worker here, our final villager, putting it back down to a zero, and we're going to have a party. But that means I'm going to have to decrease my influence by one. We've got two on the tables, so let's do the tables there. We've seated everyone. I don't think I'm going to use my sprite right now, so I'm going to roll in this worker. We have two villagers going back on to the tower space, and we'll gain coins equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight coins. That means we have 16 in total. Oh, and I can't forget we can increase our renown. Now, this, I think we have what, two more turns left? So, at the end of the next turn, I'd like to be in the level two spot, I think. Drawing our second to last weather card, we have some rain. With the season pattern of cloud, then rain, we get to increase all of the workers by one. That's cool. 
Uh, we can also see here there's no event and no building queue increase. So we'll just go right to drawing our uh, total amount of customers, which will be seven. There's only two workers that aren't at three in total. So they're all at three. That is nice. Here we have our seven customers. I think almost all of these should fit into our inn, no problem. We're going to go into town and we'll spend five coins to snag these two workers. I'm going to choose the sprite as my alignment because I will definitely pamper one of these. I don't really care which one it is. We're going to do this one because I think I can do all of them. But the big thing is three more coins come in to my uh, inn which is great. We have 14 total coins. I'm realizing I had three with the bar symbol, so I am going to move one of the bar symbol ones over to the table for sure. Then we can seat all of them. I will use my uh, village uh, die here, going down to a two, and we're going to have a party. This will be our last party that we have, and we're going to do that with the tables because all three tables are full. We're also going to use one of these dice, and we'll take it down to a two. So thank you, sprites. We're going to do some building. We're going to build something with, I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm going to build a fireplace. I think this is another furniture piece. It costs 10 total coins. You can see that. I'll put that right here. And that means I have four remaining. I'm doing that because looking at these level twos, a lot of these, I'm going to have a hard time doing actually, because I need two music. Oh my gosh, it's a lot. Uh, or two food, but if I do the fireplace, this this token here, no problem, I can place it. So I felt like that was worth it. I won't do anything else. I've seated everybody, so before I forget, I'm gonna increase my renown. Should do that at the end, but I'm just doing it so I don't forget. Coins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten coins, we get all that money right back. <laughs> That's cool. Last card of the season, and we have some rain. Two rain doesn't match a seasonal effect, but we will have an event. We have glum wood golems. A commotion rises up in the town near the lumber yard. It's a group of wood golems. They're upset that despite your promises of responsible forestry, you're stockpiling deadwood. To them, it's a wasteful process as you should only chop down what you need. They begin to dismantle the lumber yard. The only way to appease them is to upgrade to a more efficient lumber mill. The wood golem will show you the way. We have to remove the, the lumber yard, so we can't even make the lumber yard. Instead, we're going to construct the lumber mill at no cost. If you already have built the lumber mill, no, we have not. Well, the lumber mill will be placed on the third spot of the construction track. Well, that was cool. And what's great is I already have a spot for it and everything. Sweet. Because of that rain, we have seven customers coming into our inn. Three need windows. Seriously? <laughs> I only have two windows, so we're going to have to pamper someone. For our final town action this season, let's go explore. We have Pursuit. While on a walk, you once again have the feeling of being watched from the woods. This time, you're ready. We can choose either to attempt to catch the watcher on our own. No way. We can pip down one of our villagers to help us or pip down one of the sprites. Well, I've got a three and a two sprite, so let's do the sprite, taking it down to a two, and let's see what it does for us. Before you reach the forest, the sprite touches your arm. Let us take care of this. Shuffle event 126 into the event deck. Oh, cool. And we are with the fairies this time. For our character action this round, we're definitely going to pamper. We'll gain three more coins because of it. We'll put this guy over here at the table. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave all of my workers. I don't think I want to do anything else. We're just going to gain coins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more. That means we're at 24 total coins. I'll take that. Uh, we also will increase our renown to level two, and that's going to end our season. Because our renown is now at level two, we'll get all these level two uh, customers, but they'll give us two coins if we help them. Now, I realize when I was looking at these, I was looking at the level three ones. Uh, the level three ones are the ones that need like, four different things in the end. So actually, I'm feeling pretty good looking at these level twos. We should be, well, we'll be okay. I've got to build a few more things. So I've got 20 some coins. So I'm going to put all of those into my bag now. So I have level ones and level twos in my orange bag. We've shuffled up that weather deck and we'll resolve our goal card. We get the positive effect. So let's see. This one says oh, we can gain one of our actions. 
So one of our skill actions for free right now and then shuffle goal 11 in. We have three tables, so let's gain three more coins. That means to start winter, we'll have 27 coins. We've got a nice little nest egg. Our new goal is each character must have one skill. So actually, I'm already done with that. I have one skill already, so that's not bad. Finally, we'll change our season tile, and this time we'll go back to having three symbols. We'll kind of rotate them around. I think that's kind of fun to have different varieties for each season. At this point, I think I'm going to stop here. We'll continue this on during our live play on Monday, and we'll have Berndt join the town, which is really cool that we can do that. I can also change the characters that I'm going to play. So I might play the farmer, I think. Uh, I definitely want to try a different one because I've played the innkeeper for a bit. So I'd like to do something, but I might finish off this uh, entire year as the innkeeper and then jump over to the farmer. I want to see all of them. It's cool to see how they're all so unique. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more awesome playthroughs, please check out our other videos. And thanks to all of our patrons. We do have a Patreon if you want to support us. Help us to make videos just like these. Pick out characters. The Patreon is picking out the character Berndt is going to play on Monday. So if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>